So gifting will fill a room. A gifting will entertain the room, but only an anointing breaks yokes and chains and bondages. And I said, your generation, people are coming inbound and they're leaving bound Mm -hmm. and not being set free because it's the oil that will set them free. And I go, you won't get oil if you're not crushed. And when we're not even willing to go, I'm going to be inconvenienced so I can learn from you or what it's... Or take a rebuke. Any correction, any nothing. I'm here today because of those who went before me. I have parents who preached the gospel, who taught me the Word of God, who lived it in front of me. I'm strong in my faith today because of those shoulders that I stand upon. Yeah. Amen. And we look at this generation, we look at the younger generation, a lot of times we complain, but I believe God is raising an army of, of strong believers, but the Bible tells the older women to teach the younger women. It just doesn't happen, but we have to take out time and teach them. So how important is that? I mean, there's so many examples in the Word of God of mentoring. We talked about Paul and Timothy, and of course, Moses and Joshua, and we can just go on and on. How important is it? Oh, it's very important, and I think it's very lacking. The older people sometimes want to don't want to take the time to do it. The younger people sometimes already think they know, they know it all, (laughs) and they don't want to listen. And I think that's just just as big of a problem. I don't think today that people have the respect for older people that they should. 100% agree. (laughs) And I think, um, you know, when we think about what this is all about, I, I, for me, the saddest scripture in the Bible Mm -hmm. is Judges chapter 2, verse 10, that says, when Joshua and his generation died, another generation arose that did not know the Lord, nor the works he had done for Israel. And I think, think about everything Joshua did. (laughs) He came out of Egypt, so he saw a Red Sea part. He saw manna come from heaven Mm -hmm. for 40 years. He saw the River Jordan push back. He saw the walls of Jericho come down. They possessed the promised land. So in terms of mega power ministry, (laughs) signs, wonders, Mm -hmm. miracles, I see, he, he did it all. But are you actually effective mm. if another generation aro- right arises and that know. does not know the Lord or the works that he's done for Israel? And so I am looking at this on the earth right now because there has been a lot of promotion from a lot of spiritual giants into eternity. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm, I, I think about this often. And, you know, I, I sort of hitched my wagon to Joyce for th- three decades now, but somehow God gave me the wisdom to know from a young age that you honour and you learn yes. and you, yes. uh, and all of the things. You, yes. Right. And so because there's a baton of faith, like our job, Jude says, you've got to hand on the faith that has been handed down from all generations. Mm-hmm. That is actually our job, that I am going to carry the baton of faith from one generation to the next. So yes, right. rescue the victims of human trafficking. Yes, preach the gospel. Yes, but I better be handing on the baton of faith right. so that when me and my generation die, suddenly we don't look and go, yeah. they don't know God. When I realized I was part of the older generation, <laughs> it took me a minute to realize that because I started out so young. Um, I felt the urgency and the responsibility that it was my turn to pour into those who are coming after me. I am only here today because of those who went before me, those who laid down their lives, those who fasted and prayed for me, those who corrected me, those who told me what I needed to hear, not just what I wanted to hear. Um, I am standing strong in my faith because of them, the shoulders that I stand, I still stand on them today. And it comes a point in our lives that it's not about what we can get, but it's what are we giving? And it was my turn to pour out to the young people who are coming after me. I'm the mother of the church now. It's it's my responsibility to make sure that when I pass this baton to the next generation that they're ready. One of the reasons why you and I have remained friends was because you had that respect right. and honor You've always treated me very, very well, and you've taken the time to come to my conferences, and you've always... So there's two sides to right. this. It's you not... It's time to sit at your feet. It's not just am I willing, mm-hmm. but she's been willing. Right. And I do think it has to be a two-sided thing. Yes, it can't just be we want to do something for the next generation. Right. 
No, they have to be. It's like in a relay that you're passing yeah, the, you baton. Pass the baton. You better have your hand and you know ready. ready and uh, you know I've got a lot of batons I want to hand on to them. But if you're if you're just going, I don't want that one. Mm -hmm. I just want this one, right. and mm -hmm. I want to go there. And uh, and you're you're not actually. Uh, wanting a deposit of faith, but you want someone's platform, that's a really big different right. thing. If you want to use right. someone to build your platform right. versus having an impartation um, of faith. And I think that is lacking. I mean, it, you know, there are few and far between. I, I've said to a lot of um, the young people in this generation, and I still get to speak to a lot of them, I said, you do, you do actually self-select because I'm open and I know a lot of uh, my generation that is open to pouring into you. Mm -hmm. But once we've created those pipelines and pathways, you have to have the initiative right, right. to want to come and do that. Elisha had to burn everything to follow Elijah, right. whereas we in the church in this last season, we've gone so far the other way of going, okay, um, we've so overcompensated and we've so pampered that no one's got to seek it out for themselves. And so then there becomes a familiarity. And then there becomes right. like, oh, I'll just log on. And if I want to watch mm -hmm. that, and it's like, you know, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Paul, I'm just going to pick my favorite speaker, mm -hmm. whatever I can get out of them rather than going. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking at Christine or Joyce, I'm talking, uh, the the woman that leads a Bible study in your local church, the mm -hmm. person, whoever is a mother mm -hmm. that, you know, you're a mom and there's another mother that's got five kids that could teach you something about right. mothering or, that's you know, right. pick your area. But that kind of yearning and then willing to rearrange your life and be inconvenienced and interrupted to go after the anointing, going, I want to sit at the feet of that anointing. Yeah. I mean, uh, rather than just going, well, I want everything on demand. We're so used to on demand. on demand. If I don't give it to them on demand, I'm like, you don't get the anointing on demand. Yeah. You don't right. get that. Like, it's not like something you could just get an app and push it down. And so, <laughs> yes, can you download messages from Christine or Joy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But proximity to anointing, mm. to learn. Mm. I mean, the scripture from beginning to end yeah. is you've got to have proximity, yeah, right. but we want an easy kind of download so that that willingness to go, whatever it takes. And I think in our culture, people are like, well, I don't want to do that or I don't want to, um, you know, you were talking about what you did um, for for no cost and like for, or no, no yeah. remuneration. That's I'm right. thinking all of us would have stories. Lisa and I talk about when we were Serving. doing youth ministry, it's youth called ministry. servanthood. Yeah. Well, nowadays that phrase has been so co-opted because people, well, that's exploitation. And you're, and I'm, yeah. I, I, I know I've actually said to young people, I'm not sure how to do it because the only way I know how to mentor is like, follow me as I follow Christ that's and get right. the, get the, yeah. but in your world, I don't know what that is. It's like, well, no, I want this in certain hours and I want it in a certain way right. and I want to deliver it. And I go, right. so we got great HR policies, but guess what you don't have access to? Me, because yeah. I don't know how to do it. I don't know in my right. way is that you've got to be in my sort of orbit and my orbit mm -hmm. is not a comfortable nine to five, eight hour day. Right. So you've got to, it will mean if you want to capture this beyond everything that I'm already pouring out mm -hmm. in a message, mm -hmm. you're going to have to have proximity and be inconvenienced and think, right. where can I serve? Where is a gap that I can serve? So I'm in that orbit mm -hmm. and then I can learn. Mm -hmm. I don't see that willingness like I used to see it. Right. And so much of where I am today is because of that. I think servanthood um, is really the hub of God's wheel. And you see that in the life of Christ. If Jesus had a mission statement, it would be in Mark's gospel. And this is as he's headed toward the cross, he says, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. Um, that's pretty countercultural today when we seem so preoccupied with platform that we've completely forgotten about serving in the dark when nobody's clapping or posting likes. Um, but there is something about just setting your own will aside, wrapping a proverbial towel around your waist and just washing other people's feet. And I think that is the straight shot um, to joy and to honoring God and to being smack dab in the center of His will is um, is to love Him first and then love other people, um, preferably from a posture of, um, of servanthood. I, I think that's a bomb.
Well, yeah. something that I don't see that I think is greatly missing is people will ask me, well, how did you do this and how did you do that? And how do you write a book? And, you know, how, how, how? Well, I followed the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, they, and they just totally don't get it. It's like, which is but, sad, which is but, scary. But what was your plan? Mm -hmm. Well, I just followed the Holy Spirit. And see, I, I guess for me, I didn't have anything else. Right. I mean, that was it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't know how to do what God called me to do. I didn't have the slightest idea. I mean, when God called us to go on TV, we didn't even know we needed a TV producer. <laughs> Dave literally just went out and bought a camera, and we grabbed a guy that worked for us and said, here, learn how to work this. <laughs> and I, I mean, our first TV program, we had a blue shower curtain for a backdrop. And we were in a hotel room that had the ceiling tiles falling right. down. The thing was, was what we did have was God's anointing. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. Come on. We didn't have the plan. We didn't right. have the, right. the program. We didn't have it all dialed out ahead mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. But we were just desperate for God to help us. And we had the anointing. You know, when we use the word anointing, a lot of people haven't even heard that phrase anymore. But Jesus, Jesus Christ is the anointed one. That's what the Christ is, the anointed one. And when Jesus, the night before he was crucified on the cross, Scripture says that he went to Gethsemane and that was he was on the Mount of Olives and he was in Gethsemane, the place of the olive trees, the place of crushing. And he went on his knees before the Father and he said, Father, if there's any other way, would you take this cup from me? And Scripture says that he was dripping literally sweat and they had droplets of blood in his sweat because the crushing, the pressure he was feeling from what he was going to endure on the cross, that pressure was so great. There's actually a medical term, I can't pronounce it right, but there's a medical term that is sweating drops of blood. That's what Jesus was doing. And that is caused by an intensity of pressure. There is a crushing that is happening. So it happened physically to Jesus. And out of that crushing, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, that came a place of obedience and yielding to the will of the Father. Jesus was able to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And of course, the fruit of the oil that was poured out, Jesus sacrificing his life for us on the cross, was that all of our for sins are forgiven and that we have been forgiven for our past, been given a brand new life today and a hope for the future. And so in the same way, the prophet Isaiah says in the book of Isaiah that it's the anointing that breaks the yokes and the chains, the anointing oil in the Old Testament. The oil was produced by the crushing of olives. You can't get olive oil without crushing. And so the oil, the anointing oil that was placed on people, the sick are healed, people are delivered, people are restored. It was produced by a crushing. So if you and I want to have an oil, a flow, an anointing in our lives so that when we minister, we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We preach the Word of God and chains and shackles and bondages are broken over people's lives. Well, then you have to know that in the secret place, there's a crushing that comes that produces the oil and it produces that oil by situations of like Jesus in Gethsemane where we say, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So what do we do as leaders? Do you yeah. feel that empowering the next generation is missing that key, mm -hmm. even as we do our conferences, even as we show yep. them how to do ministry, because we have all the strategies, but we're not talking about the Holy Spirit. No, that's, I said this yesterday at um, a conference I spoke at. I was talking about the story of Elisha and the school of prophets and the one that was working and dropped the axe, the axe right. head fell off. Mm -hmm. And and the thing in that story is so powerful because the, the school of prophets, so the student prophets, the, the interns, the, the next generation, um, number one, when they wanted to go and build a bigger house, they said to Elisha, come with us. Like they wanted his yeah, presence, not just his permission. Them. And God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He's always worked generationally. Uh, we have separated the generations. COVID happened and the pandemic happened. We had everyone on what I call the upper Zoom room, our call. So 19 <laughs> offices, 14 countries on the upper Zoom. And I 
said to them all, you know, I am really sad about what's brought us here. Of course, nobody wanted a pandemic. I said, but I'm actually really happy we're here. Mm -hmm. And they all looked at me like, you know, what do you mean? I said, because you all think, I said, you've all joined this ministry when it's large and Mm -hmm. what you perceive to be successful, well-known anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I said, so you think, and you come to me with all your great ideas, which are awesome, but you think if we put a nice filter on an Instagram post or do a nice little, this is what's going to help, then the next marketing campaign, I said, but see, Nick and I, Uh, we knew all this when this wasn't anything. And I said, so when there was no internet, when there was no social media, and you actually had to get on your knees and get a download from God. I couldn't scroll through anybody else's life because I just had to get God. And I said, the same God that was with us that made all this happen. I said, you all, I said, I'm not convinced you all know that God. I said, you, you don't, I'm not convinced you know the difference between how to be marked by God or marketed by man. You think marketing will get us there, not being marked. And I said, you don't know how to be marked because you're not willing to be crushed. You want to be pampered and you cannot step into the purpose of God being pampered. You, can. you have to be crushed because that's be where crushed. oil comes from. I said, so you're about to discover that it's the word that's built this ministry and it's the right. spirit of God. And I said, so you're all going to learn what it is to pray. And I said, I'm going to believe God that we're going to be more fruitful than ever because now you are going to have to pray because you're all in lockdown. I go, I will have failed. If this thing becomes the biggest anti-trafficking organization in the world or you know, a ministry that reaches a lot of people, if you do not know how to release the anointing because a gifting will fill a room. A gifting will entertain the room, but only an anointing breaks yokes and chains and bondages. And I said, your generation, people are coming inbound and they're leaving bound Mm -hmm. and not being set free Mm -hmm. because it's the oil that will set them free. And I go, you won't get oil if you're not crushed. And when we're not even willing to go, I'm going to be inconvenienced so I can learn from you or walk. Or take a rebuke. Right. Or any correction, right. any I mean, nothing. Right. I grew up being rebuked, oh. corrected, sit down. Yeah. <laughs> the mothers, you oh, know, yeah. the mothers of the church, we, we totally. honored them, we respected them. And now, and again, we understand that a lot of people have abused certain things. Right. right. But that doesn't mean we throw it out. Right. No, right. you're right. You're absolutely right. The greatest faith hero of my life is my mom. Uh, my mom did not have an easy life. Um, but she um, she taught me about Jesus from my earliest memories. And so my mom would be my, my greatest faith hero. Um, her walk with God was, was tactile. I remember through an especially difficult season in our family, I'd gotten up early for whatever reason. And, um, and my mom, I heard noise coming from the living room and my mom was in there on her knees praying. And yeah, she was a a real Southern belle. Um, But to see her having this gritty, real relationship with God made me realize this isn't just about church attendance and you know having a quilted Bible cover and ethics. This this is about a real God who meets us in um, in really hard places. So my mom would be my faith hero, and definitely has been the one who's been my greatest cheerleader. There have been a lot of other saints along the way. Um, I've had the privilege of sitting under some incredible uh, scholars in seminary, great theologians. Um, I just got to meet one of my faith heroes, Dr. Craig Keener, one of the world's foremost authorities on the New Testament recently. And here's what slayed me about getting to meet this man whose books I've studied for decades. Um, he could he could talk about anything with wisdom and authority. He's memorized just about the New Testament. But every time he talked about the love of Jesus, he had tears in his eyes, 74 year old scholar. And when he talks about the love of Jesus, he still weeps. Those are the people who encourage me, people who are still so in love with Jesus that they, they're they just undone by him. That's who I, that's who I am to be. We have so overcorrected and I understand yes. where we need a correction. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm granted. Mm-hmm. But now it's a discipleship issue because right. they're, they're, missing they're missing a major element of discipleship and scripture, it's full of Ooh. exhortations of um, admonishment and correction. And it's, uh, it's mm-hmm. the Father's kindness that mm-hmm. leads to that. But That's if right. you're unwilling to yeah. learn anything yeah. from anybody, yeah. So how do we change that? Yeah, how do we change it? Well, I think those, I mean, there's probably a lot more than one answer, but I'm going to talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. 
awesome. that that you empowered. You that's the power. just ask God every day, fill me mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. And I think it's the same thing with the anointing. We have to, even though it may not be popular, we have to bring it back. A young person said to me recently. We don't even understand that language. Totally. It's like, well, you better start understanding it right. because it's, it's it's still it's what you need. In and I think Bible. that's I, right. I'm doing the same thing that like so yesterday when I was teaching that's about the axe thing. head, the oil of the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. what. And I know a, a generation is like deer in headlights, going, "What are you even talking about?" Yeah. And I'm thinking, I've not done my job right. if at 57 and teaching 35 years. Our generation doesn't know what the anointing is. I mean, are you kidding me right yeah. now? Like, we, the, it we was our bread and on. butter. Yeah. I mean, it was like yeah. we... It's and, not a word people even no, use. Most but I'm people wouldn't back. even I'm know what it is. Yeah. Because I said no. to a lot of my friends in the evangelical world, even I said, I'm stepping right over back into right. the whole charismatic world right. for this whole... Because it, that's how urgent I feel about it too. Right. Me too. That that without the oil... Yeah, without the oil, there's, there's no, no there's, there's no, no breakthrough. There's you no know, deliverance. I keep thinking about Elijah and Elisha. Elijah literally tried to run Elisha off, and he would not leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he would not leave. He, he just there. would not leave. And those of us and that are still here, we wouldn't leave. And the young we, people have to be stories. that hungry enough mm -hmm. that they just say we're not going to leave. Yeah. Because yeah. again, you, without the anointing, you're not hungry for the presence. Right. So what we need is the it's the presence. What they want, right. what. They want platform, not presence. Right. So they perceive right. our platforms and want a platform and notoriety, mm -mm. but not presence. Also, I, I think, like you said, the, the young people have to be willing to recognize the anointing and to pursue it, mm -hmm. you know, to s recognize wisdom and be willing to do whatever it takes to, to sit at their feet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But also I think... What we're saying today, with Joy saying that she's going to make sure she talks about the Holy Spirit going forward more. I think we have to, in order to empower the next generation, we're going to have to really share with them what it took for us to get here. Mm -hmm. I believe that. And I think that the enemy with cancel culture and the abuses and misuses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has silenced a lot of, or has caused that right. fear because you go, I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to be too right. hardcore or. The enemy is and, silencing and us. And I'm like, but and the I think we're all, are, I've, had, I've had a turning where I'm going, this is a discipleship issue now. Mm -hmm. Because unless you understand the price and the cost, what you think you want. Mm -hmm. is going to kill you. That's right. Because <laughs> if you you're get onto this it. platform without the anointing of God, mm -hmm. you're gone. You're not going right. to last a week, right. let exactly. alone be right. in the let orbit of Joyce Meyer. That's right. You know, and so I'm kind of, um, right. it is a discipleship issue and a power issue to see people set free yeah. because it's not my five tips. And we're in a very therapeutic culture and I am all about counseling and I am all about therapy. But there is but. a wonderful capital C. Counselor. Come on. And there is right. power. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Have I gone to counseling? Yes. Have I had therapy? Yes. The greatest breakthrough for me has been the wonderful counselor and the power of God to deliver me from certain things. There are several ways that the older generation can teach the younger generation. I think number one, we just have to live out the Word of God. Um, when I think about my mom, I don't really think about the sit down talks, I think about her life. I think about how she was faithful to church, how she made sure we were in church, um, how she made sure, and not just her, but her and my dad, um, made sure we grew up in an atmosphere that was filled with the Word of God, gospel music, uh, them studying the Word of God. They made sure we were in Sunday school. So I always think about her life uh, so that's the way, that's the number one way you you teach your children. And then, you know, I, I remember hearing her pray. She would make, she, she prayed with us before we went to school every morning. Um, so I, I learned how to pray by hearing her pray. And then they would, they would um, encourage us to pray, you know, to teach us. So they took out the time to teach us how to pray. They, they, they made us memorize uh, verses of the Bible. Uh, I remember now, I still remember the, the, the verse that we learned as kids, um, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1, uh, keep thou foot when thou goest to the house of the Lord and be more ready to hear than to give sacrifice of a fool, for they consider not that they do evil. Now, 
that is a deep verse, but <laughs> it was the verse that they taught us as children to respect the house of the Lord. And I still remember it to this day. And so you have to take out time to teach your children how to pray, take out time to teach them uh, memory verses because it will keep them throughout the rest of their lives. The Word of God is powerful and He's faithful to every generation. And I remember when I had um, got diagnosed with thyroid cancer uh -huh. and I went into, at the time, what was one of the largest conferences in the world. There was what I call like a brat pack. So it's sort of 10 awesome young guy pastors, but they, I mean, the skinny jeans, the tattoos mm -hmm. strategically yeah. poised, the hair done, like, <laughs> I mean, they were like, and I remember, and I love them all. That's not the right. issue. I love them. But I said, I said to my husband, now nobody at this point knew I had the diagnosis. I got the call. And I walked in and um, the arena, and it was literally a stadium, was full. Music, play, it was all awesome. And I turned to Nick and I went, wow. And he said, what? I said, I'm not worried about that news. I really wasn't right. in that. I go, there is not one of them I would go down to right now and ask them to anoint me with oil and pray for me. And I would believe that the cancer would shrivel up and die. I said, because I know how they're living and I don't think that the, the sickness would even listen. And I said, Nick, I'm not worried about myself. I said, but our daughters. I said, because I'm going to walk out and I'm going to call Joyce, which is exactly, I'm going to call five people on the, you know, uh, that are going to pray and they're going to be, I'll be fine. Um, and I said, but what's going to happen when we die and our kids can't come to us? Because I said, if this is it, I said, we filled the arena because the gift and the gift was on the platform. And I go, look at it. Of course, it doesn't get any better. I said, look at the lights. Look at the, look, I go, it's happening. I said, everyone's dressed meticulously. They could out preach me. I go, but there's no power. There's no power. It was like this revelation yeah. that the Lord allowed me to see. And I go, so what if they need deliverance? Who's going to cast a demon out? Who's going to, and, and I said, what did Jesus tell them to go tell John the Baptist, the blind see, lame walk. He didn't right. say the stadium's the filled stadium's and everyone's singing. And right. he, no, no, he said, go tell them, tell them. that this yeah. is the evidence of the this kingdom. The and I go, Nick, what are we leaving a generation? I mean, I can't even tell you how serious it was I'm in sure. me. And, and it was like, um, whatever I have to shift. And even if I have to maybe be misinterpreted, misunderstood, mm -hmm. and people think I'm crazy, if we Gotta don't do teach it. them power, right. what, what, what is going on here? Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think that's, a, that's so amazing what Joyce has done. Yes. <laughs> let's, just, let's just honor you for a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have poured your life. Mm -hmm. well, it's been so my privilege. Un so unselfishly to the world. Totally. I mean, you can go to, anytime I go to any country that yeah. I've ever been, I've been to hundred and some Joyce is there mm -hmm. right. in that language. Totally. And, awesome. and that's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. It's, it's being, you, you said a while ago that, that you're determined, determined. Yeah. you know, you're determined to share the gospel of Jesus Christ yeah. in every language, as many as you go, as far as you can go, you know, yeah. and you have poured your life into this generation mm -hmm. and into the next generation and to our children. Our children listen to you, right. yep. you know, and it's I honor a, you for that. It's out there if they'll get it. It's out there if yeah, you get it. And, get it. and I think that as Christians, we're to be salt and light. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody has hunger in their heart. Everyone is searching. Mm -hmm. And by the looks of it, it, it seems like everything's going to pot, but Right. But there is such a cry for something. Yeah. It'll and turn I, around. It'll be all I right. And I think if the people of God just stand up and walk in their call, yeah. 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 knowing Him and making Him known mm -hmm. and walking in that destiny and that purpose, just being salt yeah. and light to this generation, they're going to taste and see yeah. that the Lord yeah, is good. Amen. And I think there's just such a hunger for people to... Um, to rise up and be who God's called you to yeah, be. Yeah, rise up. This and I think, is such a time for yeah. that. You know, when we talk about fathers and mothers of the faith, I actually think of my mothers and fathers. <laughs> I actually had them. I had a beautiful mother and father-in-law who have both gone to heaven and my daddy who's gone on to be with the Lord. And the things that they taught us, how to walk in faith, how to believe God, that God can make something out of absolutely nothing if you'll give it to Him. <laughs> and, and 
I think it's so powerful because any time that we have questioned God, they have walked through it. They had walked through, they had seen God move so many times. And it's because of their stories planted into our lives that there is nothing impossible there. There's nothing that God cannot do for you. And, and in your call and walking in your purpose, He wants to take whatever you have in your hand, because I am a believer that what God's called us to, He, we were born with it. We were born with it in, in our hands. Whatever He's, He's created us to do, He's given us the ability to do already. It's already a path laid before you, and we just get to walk down it if we'll, if we'll walk in faith and believe Him and trust Him. And so that's all we saw. And so now, I don't have a limit on what God can do. And even when I try to pray for something, um, a, a vision or something, I know that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all I ever imagined or even knew to pray for. And that's what He can do for you. He wants to blow your mind with what He can do, how He can heal your heart, how He can minister to your soul, how He can heal your family, how He can do things in your lives that money cannot buy, the peace that passes all understanding. He can give you a confidence where you were so, so, your self-esteem was so low. God can give you a confidence in Him that you just never knew was inside of you. He can do things. He can do the impossible. That's what God can do. That's what He will do for you. The older generation, first of all, we never retire from the kingdom. No. Come on. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ever. so brush off your word. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not pouring into somebody, you're not answering the call. Right. Exactly. right. It's true. Because the Bible tells the older women to teach the younger. That's right. And that's what this program is. Amen. And that's what and, this and is we're built on. <laughs> and, and even talking about better together. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need one another in order yeah. to yeah. accomplish the call that God yeah. has, in order to reach all the people we totally. need to reach. We need to promote one another, love one another's yeah. unity. Totally. God says our that, destinies yeah. are locked up and it's all that's connected. Right. Right. That's right. Our destinies but, are locked up in each But to the young people. Other. Yeah. Understand, we have to value our elders. Yeah. We have to respect our elders. We have to understand that, that that's where you're going to get wisdom from. Yeah. You do not know it all, no matter how many degrees you have. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you have to submit. And when, you, when God shows you, because He will, yeah. God has awesome examples. Yeah. We were talking about Joyce and, yeah. and, and, and mm -hmm. Christine. It's like when you hear the Word of God, you can be mentored from afar. You don't have to always know that person. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I was mentored by those who preach the gospel, by the mothers who who taught us the right way, by my mom just living the life. We were totally. talking about being a mother of five mm -hmm. or six. Mm -hmm. Live the life in front of them. Pray with them. Right. Teach them how to pray. Exactly. I was with my grandkids the other day, and uh, Wyatt, my my oldest one, was talking to his sister. I should, yeah, because she's real. She's a baby. And uh she wasn't feeling well. And right away, he went and laid hands on her and started oh, praying. Somebody, and I looked awesome. at my daughter and I was just like, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank awesome. you, Jesus. Yeah. We have got to get, I feel the urgency, just, like you were saying, it's yeah. the urgency. We have to teach them how to pray. Yeah. We have to teach them how to walk it out. We have to teach them okay. the anointing breaks. Yeah. It's only the anointing, That's not it. your gift, right. but it's the giver. Come you on, know, <laughs> we, have to we have to go back to the old landmark. Yeah. yeah. My children really encourage me. They really inspire me. I could cry thinking about it. Um, I have prayed for them. I have fasted for them. And to see their desire to do God's will, to see that being their first priority is a mother's dream. <laughs> I am so grateful and I am so inspired. And I know that if God did it in my children, that He'll do it. And, and young people around the world. So God is raising up an army and I am inspired by their passion for God and their passion for God's people. That, that's amazing what you say, how the next generation God is a generational God. God, the God of Abraham, 
God of Isaac and the God of yes. Jacob, you know, and it does grieve your your spirit so much when you when you read that the next generation knew oh, not that wow. was their children, yeah. was their and kids. God commands us to tell the exactly. next generation exactly. what God has done and to teach them. Yeah, like you know. in Deuteronomy where it said, put it on your forehead, wake yeah. up talking yeah, about it. Right. You know, I remember, Roger you know, I, I couldn't dodge the Lord when I was hanging with my mom <laughs> or my grandmother. That was the conversation right. of how God healed and how he raised them from the dead. And mm-hmm. that, that was our lives. Yeah. But now we fill our life with so much of the secular, then we wonder why our children are lost. Right. You know, if your home is not filled with the word of God right. and the way of the Lord, then where are they gonna get it? Right. It has occurred to me sitting here that we are we are in a different generation now. And one thing that's comforting to me, there is so much recorded material now. Mm-hmm. Most of the people that have mentored me are dead. It's their books. Mm-hmm. Still going. Yes. That have been life changing to right. me. And so when I'm gone, I will leave at least 200 books that I've written. I mean, I'm at, a, I'm at 160 now, so I figured there'll be at least 200 yep. that people can be reading if the Lord doesn't come 100 years from now. Can we just now. back up to 160? <laughs> <laughs> My heavens to but Betsy. You, no, you think amazing. about everything that's on the Internet, mm-hmm. yeah. all right. the books. Yeah. So here, here's the only thing I want to say. Anybody that's hungry. That's right. Anybody that's hungry, you don't have to come and sit at one of our feet. Right. You, <laughs> it's there for you. Right. When I think about what I used to have to do to get a message, how many books I had to have surrounding me, mm-hmm. how many right. dictionaries and the yeah. Strong's Concordance and the Vines Concordance, and totally. you know, so now I just go. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. God's made it so easy. So easy. Yeah for people to get anything they really want. So I guess the comfort that I have is that it's there. Yeah, it's available. Anybody that's hungry can find it. We all got to have lunch together. You said that when Joyce was encouraging you, when you felt like you were gonna do a conference, she said they want to be mothered. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've seen a lot in the generation behind us. Um, I love the story of Mary and Martha, but I think we get it wrong a lot. We make it about their personalities. When Jesus said, Mary has chose, chosen what's better, she was sitting at his, at his feet in the dust. And the only other time that phraseology is used in the New Testament, it's when Paul talks about the rabbi who mentored Paul. Paul said, I sat at his feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, only men did that. And it was in a rabbinical relationship with a mentee. But Jesus said, Mary took that posture that you have something to learn and I want what it is. What I've found about younger women is sometimes they see my back instead of me inviting them in. And I thought sometimes it's my fault. They're a motherless generation spiritually Mm -hmm. because I'm so busy running ahead that I don't stop and go. What can I do for anybody who wants it? Any 20, 30, 40 year old young woman who says, can you help me understand how to navigate this and to go, let me tell you the mistakes I made. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you the holes I broke my ankle in and the pits God has dragged me. Let me tell you how he's been a good God. So I've been really convicted. Chris has helped me a lot to go, how many young people are in my life? Because mm-hmm. I don't like the torn Very jeans much. that much either, although I do have some with shreds <laughs> on. Uh, mostly I just don't want you to see what's under the holes. But um, but I've found myself going, I want to be around my daughter's friends. Yep. I want to be fun with them. I want our house to be a house where they not only hear worship music, they see a 60-year-old who goes, it just gets better. Let me tell you what I learned today. I don't want to get stale in my faith. And so I thought, wow, am I cultivating an environment where young women go, I want to sit with you. Will you have coffee with me this week? And I, I think there's a, there's an incumbent call on us as as moms in the house, as older sisters to go, who can I pour, can into? I pour into? I don't want them to have to chase me down. You know, 
I'm the mum of two daughters, and so I love my house filled with teenage girls. Now, it has been a lot of decades since I have been a teenager, but this is what I've discovered. If I, if I make my house fun, if I have lots of really great food, lots of fun conversation, then the kids all want to be in my home. And there's just something about the generations working together, about the generations being together. I've discovered that my daughters, teenage friends, they want to uh, lean in and they want to glean from uh, the wisdom and experience that I've gained over the years. And I love their energy. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And we need the wisdom of the Abraham generation. We need the resources of the Isaac generation and we need the energy of the Jacob generation. All of us working together, not trying to fit each other in each other's mold. My kids laugh at me. I can't tell you how many times my kids call me just after I've posted an Instagram story and they're like, mum, get it down. That is so embarrassing. Don't wear that top. So listen, I've got to listen to them and I laugh. And um, they're always going to say, mom, that is just like, please stop saying that. That's so embarrassing. That was relevant in your era. It's not relevant in this era. So it helps keeps my preaching fresh. It helps keep my dress fresh. And it helps just keeps, you know, it keeps great camaraderie between us that I'm like, hey, you can help me grow and I'm going to help you grow. God always meant the generations to be working together. And when the enemy sends an assignment, and you can see this in the day in which we live. When he wants to uh, really have his way on this earth, he divides the generations rather than unites the generation. We're seeing that on the earth right before our very eyes. So we as believers have got to remember the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Let's keep the generations together and so that each can flourish, glean, learn from one another. I have discovered that holes in jeans don't affect your anointing. <laughs> God right. reminded me that Moses didn't have on a three-piece suit when he went up the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. That's right. <laughs> so it is a generational yeah. thing. You know? It's a generational God sees but our But I, I do God. the same thing. I'll say that my nephew lived with us for a while and he's 24 now, but he will do things and I'll be like, oh, that's just so. And yeah. then he goes, well, Aunt Lisa, I'm like, you know what? You're right. I'm just old. Let me reframe that. Like the fog um, machines that yes, we have. The fog it's machines. like. I, I I'd like to, to see the people. I had to follow a young worship team recently at a young women's, it was a cheerleading convention. Oh, wow. I don't know how I got invited <laughs> to a cheerleading convention, but they had a, a it was faith-based and they had a Christian young male rock band and they had, and it was, they had dry ice, they had the smoke, which just highly amused me. And then the girls there were like 13, 14, so they are screaming for these young men who are singing. And then I'm trying to make my way to the pulpit yeah, because right. I can't see through the fog. But I thought, you know, I want to I want to still be able to have fun with that too. Yeah. You know, yeah. to go, of course, they're going to scream over yeah. boys in leather yeah. pants singing it, it about maybe Jesus. It won't Jesus. look the same, but long won't as it's look the, the, same. the same yeah. foundation. And I want them to know I want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. That I that I don't want to go. Ugh, that I want to go. Yeah. All right, this is a new way to run toward Jesus. Yeah. Let me, you know, let yeah. me let me run with him. At yeah. least you said something. You said that you didn't want to become stale, and and you know what? We will never be stale as long as we keep pouring out. God has called us to be in real community with people who are different ages, older than us, younger than us. You see it all throughout Scripture, and there's something about that that is both. Uh, a tutoring element, and then when I when I have a Paul in my life, somebody who's older in their walk of faith, that helps me grow. But when I have people who are younger in my life, man, that helps me stay connected to passion, um, helps me stay connected to authenticity. And so I am really, really grateful for the women that I get to do life with who are in their 20s and their 30s and even their 40s. Um, I learn a lot from them. So I shouldn't have said we only learn from the older. Actually, you learn from everybody you get to do life with. I just get different gifts from them. But um, I'm really grateful I still get to hang with women who have tight skin and high metabolisms. Joy said earlier, which I definitely have learned, that when your son was telling you how you, you had to learn to listen. Yeah. We have to learn to listen to the younger generation right. too. We have to take out the time to listen. Yeah. You know, pour in, but listen. Yeah. And I think that's the way we're going to empower them. Yeah. We have to understand the urgency right. of it. Yeah. That if we were to leave today, is my daughter equipped? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and a lot of what the younger people know today is very good. 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, like most of the people making decisions at our ministry now are 30, 40, 50, and 60 years old. They're, we, we have a, a variety because each generation knows something the other one yes, right. we're doesn't better together. know. That's right. We, we're better together. We're, we're better, better because of each other. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, what they bring to our life is mm -hmm. such help and, yes. <laughs> right, yeah. and knowledge of what's going on and the new things that, and how the world's running, yet the wisdom. The wisdom. Right. When we started making changes in our conferences, it was because when I looked out there, they were shrinking, but everybody was my age. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they need to, you need to have young people, middle-aged people, yeah. Yeah, older right. people, right. men, yeah. women. And now we have teenagers at our meetings and we have, yeah. you know, men at our yeah. meetings and all yeah. kinds of people. That's awesome. And that's, that's healthy when you see that. Yeah. It's yeah. unhealthy when everybody yeah. is just like yeah. you. You know, I've got two two boys that are in their 30s and a beautiful daughter-in-law and and to to hear their dreams and and the the faith in God because now they're generations into the miracles of of what's happened with TBN and so to to hear them and to see them and to to watch even the people around me watching my my own better together team i've got these young girls that have such a passion for god and such a passion to to um, get the word out through these programs and stuff and it's just such a joy because i think there's a there's a passion and there is a craving for god in this generation that we've maybe never seen before and i think that the holy spirit is going to have his way and he is going to go to and fro throughout the earth change lives around the world and we're going to see it happen and it's this new generation that's coming up these these young babies these these teenagers 20 30 40 50 however old you are god's wanting to do a new thing and he's wanting to do it through you i just wanted to read psalm 145 and 4 one generation shall praise yes. your works to another and shall declare your that's mighty good. acts that's isn't good. that awesome God does miracles in every generation. Yes, he does. That's right. Amen. He's not nervous about the future. No, that's good. <laughs> no. Generation after generation. God's not nervous about yes. the future. That's good. Yes, yes. So, Lori, would you pray us out? Just I would pray love for, to. Yes. <laughs> Father, I just thank you for this week. I thank you for new seasons, God, and I thank you for the grace to grow and to thrive, God, in places that we never dreamed that we could possibly have life. God, I thank you that you give life into the dark places and, and you shine your light and you give grace and you give mercy, God. Father, I pray for a hunger, a hunger in our hearts, God, to, to, to yearn after you, to, to, to want to taste and see, because every time we do, God, it, it's so good. You are such a good, kind God, Father. So I pray for a hunger, God, to hit all of our hearts and help us, Lord, through, through every day and every way, God, to show your love and your glory and be salt in life, God, to a sick and a dying society that's yearning to know you. Yes. God, to, a, to, to people, God, that are searching for you. God, and I thank you that they will find God in so many different ways, God, and that they'll spread, that'll spread to their corners of the world, God, and just, just thy kingdom come yes. Yes. and thy will be done in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for friends. Thank you for people that pour into our lives. God, thank you for the generation before that has poured into the, the miracles of God, Father, from the generations down through the fathers of our faith, God, that have poured into us to build our faith and continue telling to the next generation and to the next and to the next. We bless your precious name. We praise you for you are almighty God and we love you, Lord. And we surrender to all that you have, Father, in, in the call and the destiny that we have in our lives. God, we praise you today in Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. 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 
When I think about the next generation and the fact that God has created them with so much purpose and potential and positioned them at such a time as this, I think about Acts chapter two, when it says that in these days, God is pouring out his spirit and his sons and his daughters are going to prophesy. You know, when you think about the Holy Spirit of God, that our bodies are actually the temple of the Holy Spirit. They, they are the residents of the Holy Spirit. And my prayer is that this next generation would recognize that. And when they have to come to the decision of whether they're going to go the way of the world or the way of the word, the way of Jesus, that, that they will honor the one who has filled them with so much potential, filled them with his very Holy Spirit so that they could live out the purposes that God's placed on their lives, that their choice would be clear and they would stand tall and honor the one who has honored them with so much potential.